Most High, we get up to say Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akkad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah and bless your name. Your love, 
this morning the most high. We get up on the fifth day in expectation, counting the omer, celebrating the feast of unleavened bread in the wilderness, trusting the most high, knowing right now that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He stands on his word from Genesis to Revelation. Therefore, we know that he cannot change. He changes not. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So we find ourselves in the same place as the children of Israel. And they said in the book, and Paul said, Israel is our example. So right now we are in the wilderness counting the homer. Come on now. We're going to give you understanding this morning of what it means to count and to make it count. Because the Most High said he would teach us how to number our days. Let's make it count. Because he gets brand new mercies in a brand new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on now. Come on now. We got to rejoice. I don't know what your wilderness is. I don't know what you're going through right now. All I know right now and all you need to do is count up in expectation because the most high God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive. You got to think about it right now. We're in the wilderness, but we're with the most high God. And he's leading and guiding us into all truth. Because the steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Most High God. Come on now, tell the Most High God, even in the wilderness, order my steps in your word. Hallelujah and bless your name. We're not going to lean to our own understanding. Because sometime in the wilderness, you might want to get a little discouraged. We're not going to lean to our own understanding. With all our ways, we're going to acknowledge the Most High God because He is directing our path. It's something about when He's the author and finisher of our faith. And we know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Most High God. Come on now. It's impossible. To please the most high God without faith. Come on now. Faith in Hebrew means obedience. We're going to have to be obedient in the wilderness. And not murmur or complain. Because the most high God is saying right now. Now is not the time to murmur or complain. When you're counting the armor. Celebrating the feast of unleavened bread. In the wilderness with the most high God. Now is the time to trust him. Yeah. Lean not. To your own understanding. You got to trust him. Hallelujah and bless your name. So enjoy your wilderness with the most high God. Because this is the closest that you'll ever be to the most high God. Meeting with him face to face like Moses did. Oh it's a time to see his face. Not only to seek him but to see his face. As you read eight verses of Psalms 119 every day. Today is day five of counting the Omer. And we are excited. About what the most high God is doing right now in this season. In this time. In this season. His appointed times. We know right now that we don't even have to be afraid. Because the most high God said. I didn't give you the spirit of fear. But power. And love and a sound mind. Come on, don't be afraid in the wilderness. We will overcome. We have already overcame. Hallelujah, by the blood of the Lamb. We came out of Passover now. Come on now. All the enemies that we saw, he said, those enemies you will no longer see anymore. So come on, Lord, rise up. Let our enemies be scattered. We are in the wilderness trusting you like never before. We are in the wilderness depending on you like never before. We are in the wilderness because we want to hear from the most high God. Yes. Come on now. His sheep know his voice. And another, he will not they will not follow. Come on in here. We're going to teach this Omer today. What is the Omer? That's picking up manna every single day. When he told the children of Israel to go out in the morning and pick up the manna. Come on now. Manna is raining from heaven this morning. I'm so thankful. Right now that the Most High is saying, I got you in the same place 
Trust in me. Trust in me. Because sometimes things go on in your life and you're like, oh, Lord, I don't know if I can trust this or not. Trust him. Because many of the plans in a man's heart. But it's the most high's purpose that will prevail. Trust him. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Trust him. Hallelujah. And bless your name. What's going on in the wilderness for you? Is he teaching you perseverance right now? Is he teaching you endurance? Is he teaching you to hold on no matter what? What's going on in your wilderness right now? You have to ask yourself that question. Because he's teaching you something right now. To hold on to the most high God's unchanging hand. See, with men, things might be impossible. But with the most high God, all things are possible. I don't care if it looks dark in your wilderness. The darkest hour is just before daybreak. Hallelujah. And bless your name. So trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. I don't care what's going on. Trust him. Now is the time is not to second guess anything. Just trust the most high God. Just tell yourself, I will trust him. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what I feel like. I will trust him. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Whoa, most high. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook live this morning. The ones that will listen live now and the ones that would come and listen later. You have one word for them. Trust me. Hallelujah. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil because the most high God is with you on the fifth day. Trust me. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Hallelujah. One word this morning. Trust me. Lean not to your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge the most high God. Because he is directing your path. In the wilderness, in the wilderness, in the wilderness, you might feel alone. But the most high God is right there with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Trust him. Open our eyes that we may see this morning. I ask you to decrease me as you give the increase. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. That means I trust you. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Holy Spirit, lead and guard me into all truth. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. So now. Are you ready? Yes, most high God. For the word of God. The father of Abraham. The father of Isaac. The father of Jacob. Are you ready? For the word of God. The father of Abraham. The father of Isaac. The father of Jacob. This morning, we are coming out of the book of Leviticus because we are the Levitical priests. Leviticus chapter 23 in its entirety. Come on now. He told the Levitical priests to never let the, uh, the fire on their altar go out and teach the clean from the unclean, the holy from the unholy, and the feast days. The Moodims of the Most High God. So let's teach this feast of unleavened bread and teach another Omar. Hallelujah. This morning, we are coming out the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23 in its entirety. And it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord. I'm sorry. Uh, did somebody asked when we do that Jewish thing. Or we, we study like Jewish folks. I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be a holy convocation. Even these are my feasts. Who feasts are they? Because y'all said we was Jewish. Uh-uh. Who feasts are they? They are the feasts of the Lord. Six days shall work be done. 
But the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. A holy convocation. Come on out of the wilderness and let me teach you. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord and all your dwellings. Oh, no, you can't pick and choose just because you change it to Sunday. He said right here, uh, ye shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath of the Lord and all thou dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Come on now. In the 14th day of the first month at Eve is the Lord's Passover. Come on now. And we already pass over. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread. Oh, we in the feast right now of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no civil work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Seven days in the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no civil work therein. And the Lord spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and ye shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheep of the first fruit of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be acceptable for you. Or the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it, and ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheep and lay he a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour, mingled oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. What you say? For a sweet savor and a drink offering shall be of wine, the fourth part of the hen. And ye shall eat neither bread nor porch corn nor green ears until the same self day that ye have bought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. And ye shall what? Count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye bought the sheep of wave offering, seven Sabbath shall be completed. Even until the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, ye shall number fifty days. Come on now, we count in the harbor. Hallelujah. Ye shall number fifty days. Come on, Shavuot. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of ten deal. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with living. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year and you and one young bullock and two rams they shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord with their meat offering and their drink offering even an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goat for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruit for a wave offering before the Lord. With the two lambs, they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no civil work therein. It shall be a statue forever in your and all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make glean radiance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shall thou gather all the gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the strangers. I am the Lord your God. And the Lord God spake 
or to Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say it in the seventh month and the first day of the month. Shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing trumpets, a holy convocation? Ye shall do no civil work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moshe, saying, Come on, Most High God, also on the tenth day of this seventh month. There shall be a day of atonement. Come on, Yom Kippur. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in the same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you, but for the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off. From among the people. And whosoever so. And whatsoever so it be. That does work. Any work. in that same day. The soul will I destroy. From among his people. He shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever. How many times he going to say forever? Because he knew you was going to do Easter. And all them foolish holidays. Oh Lord. It shall be a statue. Forever. Throughout your generations. In all your dwellings. Uh oh you've been scattered. But you done forgot the Sabbath. It shall be unto you. A Sabbath of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls. In the ninth of the month. At eve. From eve unto eve. Shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. And the mom, Lord spoke. Unto Moses saying. Speak unto the children of Israel. Saying. The fifteenth day. Of the seventh month. Shall be the feast. Of tabernacles for seven days until the Lord. On the first day, it shall be a holy convocation, and ye shall do no civil work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day, oh Lord, shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh, it is a solemn assembly. And ye shall do no civil work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord. Not Easter. Not Christmas. Not Mother's Day. Uh-oh. You coming for Mother's Day too? Mm -hmm. Not Mother's Day. All these things are pagan idolatry worship. I just read all his feast days. From Passover... All the way down to the blowing of the trumpets. Come on now. All the way down to Shavuot. Come on now. You better pass over then. And realize all this time you've been celebrating the wrong days. Oh, Lord. These are the feast of the Lord. Which ye shall proclaim to be a holy convocation. To offer an offering made by fire. Unto the Lord. A burnt offering and a meat offering. A sacrifice and a drink offering. Everything upon his day. Uh-oh. Did that say upon the Jewish day? Everything upon his day. Besides the Sabbath of the Lord. And besides your gifts. And besides your vows. And besides your free will offering. Which ye shall give unto the Lord. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord. Seven days on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath, and ye shall take you on the first day. The boughs of goodly trees. Come on, Torah. Branches of palm trees. Y'all thought that was a palm Sunday. Stop it. And the boughs of thick trees. And the willow brooks. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God. Seven days. The joy of the Torah. And ye shall keep it. A feast unto the Lord. Seven days in the year. It shall be a statue. Forever. And all your generations, ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. 
ye shall go well in boots. Oh, come on, tabernacle. For seven days. All that are Israelite born. Boom, there you go. It's right there. All that are Israelite born shall do well in booze. That your generations, uh-oh, wake them up, Dr. J. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. And Moshe declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. If you would read Leviticus chapter 23, you would never ask me if I'm Jewish. Right there it said Israelite born. Boom. <clears throat> May the most high God add a blessing. And he May the most God add a blessing to the hearers of his word this morning. Let's be some doers too. Can't just hear it. You got to do it. Thank you, Most High God. Wow. He said we could really stop right there and end prayer. Because they keep asking you, are you doing a Jewish thing? Tell them to read Leviticus <clears throat> chapter 23. Are you Jewish? <laughs> no, I'm Israelite-ish. <laughs> oh, Lord. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Who he speaking to? Who he speaking to? And the Lord God said unto Moshe, Speak unto the children of Israel. Uh-oh, you didn't know you was Israel. You thought you was a Christian. Uh-oh, sorry. You're not a Christian. <laughs> That's pagan idolatry worship. We are Israelites. So, we keep the feast of the Most High God. What you say? And ye shall keep it a feast. Unto the Lord seven days in the year. And it shall be a statue forever. In your generations, ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. And ye shall do well in boots for seven days. All that are Israelite born shall do well in boots. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to do well in boots. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. You want to count now? You want to make your days count? Because I'm telling you right now, there's only one God. And he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You've been out there serving them 365 gods. So you forgot how to count. You on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. We on day one, day two, day three. Listen to that count. Day four, day five. Something about counting up, counting up, counting up. Expectation begins to rise. We on day five of counting the Omer. You better stop it. All right now. The day of the offering, the first fruit of barley, was the starting point to count the 50 days for the commencement of the day of Shavuot, or some call it Pentecost. The next feast on the calendar. And you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath. From the day that you bought the sheep of the wave offering. Seven to Sabbath shall be completed. Seven Sabbath shall be completed. We right there right now. Count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15 and 16. The counting of these 50 days is traditionally known as counting of the Omer. The Shafar Ho Omer. This has its Origins in the daily task of counting an omer, a measure of manna. Oh, Lord, I'm getting a measure of manna every day. Oh, Lord, a measure of manna 
that each person was to collect as his daily portion of food when in the wilderness journey from the exodus to the promised land. Come on, those I got! This was also incorporated as a daily ritual into the temple mechan or grain offering in Leviticus chapter 2 as well as being the basis for the Omer offering. This is what the Most High has commanded. Gather of it manna. Ooh, Lord. Every man as much as he should eat. Ooh, Lord. Ye shall take an omer, a piece, according to the number of persons each of you has in his tent. Exodus chapter 16, verse 16. An omer of grain, or one-tenth, of an ephod is an ancient measurement equivalent to the amount of fine flour required for a loaf of challah bread or roughly the needs for one day's supply of bread per person. It's about five pints. The days in the wilderness from Passover to Sinai were marked off are counted by their daily task each morning of collecting the omer of manna for the day. The supernatural provision of the omer was the measure which each person needed for their daily substance. Oh, come on, most I got. Or, in other words, it was their daily bread. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 11, Give us this day our necessary portion, or give us this day our daily bread. Therefore, counting the days between the first fruit offering of Passover and Shavuot, or you call it Pentecost, was called counting the Omer. In Exodus chapter 16, verse 4 and 5. And drop down to verses 14 through 21. In the wilderness. Come on now. That's where we are right now. In the wilderness. This step-by-step -step journey through the wilderness was a time of the trial and testing and teaching them to trust and obedience as he dealt with their fleshly nature in preparation for their time of encounter with him at Mount Sinai. You might want to count today. Yeah, yeah. This step by step journey through the wilderness was a time of trial and testing and teaching them to trust and obedience as he dealt with their fleshly nature. In preparation for their time of encounter with him at Mount Sinai. Woo! I'm about to have an encounter with him face to face when I come out of this wilderness. Step by step. I'm teaching you, Dr. J. I'm taking you through trial, testing. I'm directing you. I'm perfecting you. It's preparation time by a way of the wilderness. Because you got some flesh that I need to get rid of. Hallelujah. Because they ain't looking like the fruits of the spirit. And one of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. And everybody ain't learned to control themselves. Oh, Lord. This journey through the wilderness was a type of spiritual experience of overcoming. What you say? This journey through the wilderness was a type of the spiritual experience of overcoming. From salvation and deliverance, Passover, to a mix for, oh Lord, and the Red Sea. You call it baptism. And leaving sin behind in Egypt. You better come on, Most High. Marching and struggling through the wilderness, our fallen human nature, until they reach the promised land, the kingdom of God. What you say? Wow. The journey 
through the wilderness was a type of the spiritual experience of overcoming from salvation and deliverance. Passover to Mexico in the Red Sea. You call it baptism and leaving sin behind. In Egypt, marching and struggling through the wilderness, our fallen nature ooh, of a human. Come on now, until they reach the promised land, the kingdom of God. Each day, they want to count the Omer. Oh, come on, Most High God. I'm getting closer to you in relationship right now because I'm coming into understanding. Come on now, Dr. J. Each day, they were to count the Omer as they experienced their journey from captivity, Egypt, to fulfillment, Mount Sinai. You better come out, Most High God. This daily count is associated with the progressive experiences during the process of preparing them to overcome their fleshly nature as they could come into covenant marriage relationship with him and Mount Sinai. You better teach this Holy Ghost each day. In the wilderness, they were to gather whoo, the manna, just as each day we are to gather our spiritual food from the word of God. Our manna for the day. Mm -mm 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 -mm. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That proceed is out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, drop down to verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. You better come on and read that again, Dr. J, because I don't think they understand where they are right now. It's so important. I done took them from Egypt. Their sinful nature into the wilderness to mix for them. By the washing of the word of God. By the Red Sea. That sinful nature. I got to wash some stuff off of you. Because you got some Egypt still that's trying to surface. Hallelujah. And bless your name. So each day in the wilderness, they were to gather the manna. Oh, Lord. Just as day, just as each day, we are to gather our spiritual food from the word of God. Our manna for the day. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, oh Lord, verse 4. And Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. The bread of life. Now you're getting an understanding of who you're serving. If you read Leviticus chapter 23, and now the study is breaking it down, you're coming into understanding. Whose resurrection did you just celebrate? Wow. Yeah, whose resurrection did you just come out of? The bread of life. Regarding the manna, <coughs> excuse me, regarding the manna, Moshe said, this is the bread which the Most High has given you to eat. I want to tap some masa right now. I'm just like, what you say? Say it again, Moses. Regarding the manna, Dr. J, Moses said, this is the bread which the Most High has given you to eat. Exodus chapter 16, verse 15. Yeshua, the Messiah, Mashiach. Ooh. It's the living bread. And he said, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. John chapter 6, 
verse 32 and 33. Yeshua added, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. In verse 35. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me has everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. He's trying to tell you. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread. Oh, Lord. Which came down from heaven. Oh, I thought y'all said Yeshua was not in the Old Testament. He said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. In verses 47 through 51. We are to feed on the living word. Oh, this is so good this morning. I'm trying to take my time in it too. It's so good. Oh, taste and see. Oh, Lord, that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. Oh, Lord, we are to feed on the living word through the spirit every day. Gathering our spiritual manner, our portion, as the heavenly dew settles upon it from above. What you say? Every day on 5 a.m. prayer, I'm writing out manner, and I've been doing it for 10 straight years. You've been getting up every morning, getting the manner. What you say? You've been getting up every day, Dr. J. Get in manna. Wow. You don't even understand that the blessings are pursuing you. You going to be obedient to my word? Oh, you keeping the Sabbath and the feast days, but you being real obedient because you get manna every day. The living word. I am the bread of life. All right, Moses. Okay, all right. We are to feed on the living word through the spirit every day. Come on now, gathering our spiritual manna. Oh now, come on now, our portion as the heavenly dew settles upon it from above. The Holy Spirit quickens ooh, the written word to make it life-giving food for our souls. In the wilderness of this life, oh, come on now. In the wilderness of this life, it is only food that will sustain us until we reach the promised land of his kingdom. It is by his word that we become partakers of the divine nature. What you say? 5 a.m. prayer got so much word. Woo! Rightly dividing the word of truth. Woo! 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. It is by his word. That we become partakers of the divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. But the Pacific period from Passover, Pesach, to Shavuot, Pentecost, the instruction is to count the intervening 50 days. There, there is spiritual significance, therefore. You better come on and teach me. There is spiritual significance, therefore, in the actual counting of the days of this preparation period between the two events. Oh, Lord! Passover and Shavuot. What you say? In the actual counting of the days of this preparation between periods, two events, Passover 
in Shavuot, or you call it Pentecost. The significance of the time counts. What you say? The significance of the time counts. In the original Exodus, and you know you are the second Exodus, Dr. J. You are the greater Exodus. Let me teach you something about the original Exodus. Come on, Most High God! In the original Exodus, there were 50 days between the Feast of First Fruits. You know that three days journey out of Egypt? And the feast of Shavuot or Pentecost when they came to Sinai. There they received the law written on tablets of stone. They continued. What you say? They continued to keep the feast as instructed throughout their generations during the temple period. In the time of Yeshua, there were 50 days between his resurrection, fulfillment of the first fruits, and the outpouring of the Spirit, fulfillment of Shavuot, Pentecost. This time the law was written on the hearts of those who enter into covenant by a similar manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the most high in tongues of fire. Oh, Lord. So y'all thought y'all was speaking in tongues. You better stop it. That wasn't no speaking in tongues at Pentecost. You better know what tongues of fire mean. Oh, Lord. In the time of Yeshua, there were 50 days between his resurrection the fulfillment of the first fruits and the outpouring of the spirit fulfillment of Shavuot or Pentecost this time the law oh you better teach this most high this time the law was written on the hearts of those who entered into covenant by a similar manifestation of the spirit of the most high in tongues of fire. Did you say the most high? Yeah, we did. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 through 3. Each time there was a betrothal covenant enacted with his people that would have a future consummation. What you say? Each time there was a betrothal covenant enacted with his people that would have a future consummation. The intervening period of 50 days between these two events was the preparation time given to them to prepare them to be able to enter into covenant. What you say? preparing you you just came out of the church no more Easter for you but Passover your first one now you don't cross over Hebraically into the wilderness and the most high God said count cause I'm about to patrol you as my bride cause you thought you was the bride of Christ now there's gonna be manifestation because I'm going to write my Torah all over again on your heart and on your mind. And I'm going to bring it to your remembrance. Oh, Lord. Fifty days corresponds to the number of the Jubilee, the year of release. The Jubilee templifies the time of release from sin's bondage and death when all the spiritual debts will have been paid and redemption will be complete and he will take his covenant bride to himself. Yeah. The appointment he has made for his people now is a release from the power of sin by the spiritual impartation oh Lord, of a new nature. The law 
written on our hearts. Oh, Lord. If you don't explain the coming of the armor, the feast of Shabbat, Pentecost, was the outpouring of the spirit of the Most High to write his laws on the fleshly tablets of our hearts. Shut up. It was also the presentation of the two wave lows before the face presence of the father. The period between the two feasts is prophetic time period of looking forward to the coming and to the fullness of his life when we will stand presented faultless before the throne of the father as the two lows of Shavuot. What you say? Jude chapter 24 in its entirety. <clears throat> Excuse me. Going from the consecration ooh, of separating ourselves from all that is contrary to the pure life of Messiah. In the feast of unleavened bread. And though a daily process of feeding on the life of Yeshua, we come to Shavuot. And all it signifies. But we are instructed oh Lord, to count the Omer. Count the measure of what we are feeding upon. Are we feeding? On milk? Uh-oh. Or are we feeding on the meat of the world? Oh, Lord. Are we feeding on milk? Or are we feeding on the meat of the world? Which will build the strength and fullness of Messiah's statue in us. What? Is what we are gathering the type of food which will bring us before his presence with exceeding joy. We are to be made into loaves of the finest flour to be presented before him. What you say? I'll say it again, Dr. J. We are to be made into loaves of the finest flour to be presented before him at the end of these 50 days two loaves of the finest wheat flour baked with leaven permeates by the spirit was to be brought together with seven-year-old lambs, a sin offering and a peace offering and an offering before the Most High. This is symbolic of the two houses of Israel and the wealth by the Spirit, two loaves baked with leaven presented before the fathers filled with all the fullness of God, seven lambs. Having received the full benefits of the atonement to stand without spot or blemish before him in complete peace and reconciliation, sin and peace offering. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 16 through 21. Spiritual preparation. Oh, Lord. The bread made for the offering is composed of the finest and best wheat. What kind of spiritual wheat are we? What you say? What kind of spiritual wheat are we? This bread offered at the feast was refined and put through the seat. Many times sifted and resifted until it was of excellent quality and pure. This is a picture of the purified and refinement that needs to be rough in our lives through the sifting out of all dross. Are we conducting our lives? 
in the knowledge that we have to measure up to the life of Yeshua and come into the presence of the Most High before his throne, before him personally? Are we feeding on the manna that is causing Messiah to form in us? If you don't give me some masa right now, oh Lord, are we feeding on the manna, oh Lord, that is causing Messiah to be formed in us? Galatians chapter 4 verse 19 By the spirit of the most high Day by day Changing us And transforming us Into the perfect bread Oh lord Oh that's that matzah I'm talking about Seven days you should eat unleavened bread Get on out here and pick up this omer I'm talking about pick up this manna Get your daily portion I got a whole new thing for going in this wilderness. I'm good. I, I, I don't know about you. After this teacher right here, I'm just going to eat the bread. That's what I'm going to do. I'm good. I don't know. I'm going to eat the bread and sip the tea. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm good. Are we feeding on the manna? That is causing Messiah to form in us. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. By the spirit. Ooh, this is good. Oh, the most high. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed me till I walk no more. I just had to say that. Okay. <clears throat> By the spirit of the most high. Day by day. Changing us. And transforming us into the perfect bread. The perfect living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. How well are we measuring up against the perfection of Messiah to qualify as his bride? Uh-oh, are you measuring up? We need to take account of the measure of life that is needed to obtain the perfection that is in Yeshua, our Messiah. <clears throat> this period of time is for the purpose of elevating our spiritual life and having a spiritual checkup. Oh Lord! This period of time is for the purpose of evaluating our spiritual life and having a spiritual checkup. Wow. To press in so as to dig deeper into the word and draw out, come on Moses, that spiritual manna wow. significant for our preparation of betrothal to our bridegroom. It is a time to seek the most high in prayer and fasting. To measure up to the standard. Ooh, there is a standard. The pattern. Oh, Lord. This teaching is so amazing. The pattern. The understanding in the Hebrew to count the days is that it is to be a celebration in the ritual counting of them. There also is a pattern to be followed. This period of 50 days, seven weeks plus a day is divided into seven periods or cycles of spiritual progress. Where you at, Dr. J? I'm in the wilderness. I'm excited. I will not murmur and complain. I'm not going to miss my spiritual checkup. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. It, it's divided into seven periods of 
cycles of spiritual progress. The form of the word for weeks used in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 15 has the sense of time periods or we could interpret it as cycles of seven days. Let's journey with the nation through this cycle to see the process they went through in being prepared to come to the most high God at the mountain. I get to do it? Yes, you get to do it, Dr. J. Oh, Lord, all these years. It don't matter. You get to do it now. Okay. I'm like real excited. I'm, I'm like, oh, oh, calm down. You, you got this. I want to run around the house most high. You can do that after prayer. Okay. Okay. All right. The form of the word for weeks used in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 15 has a sense of time periods. Or we can interpret it as cycles of seven days. Let's journey with the nation through cycle to see the process they went through and preparing and being prepared, excuse me, to come to the mountain of the most high God. Number one, the first week or cycle in this period is the feast of unleavened bread during which no leaven is to be eaten. I'm doing that. It is a time to remove all leaven. All the wrong doctrine, mindsets of the world, etc. And to ensure that we are truly unleavened and be renewed in the spirit of our mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6 through 8. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20 through 32. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Number 2. The second period brings them the Mara, the place of bitter waters, the prizing of his word that ensues from removing ourselves from the worldly sisters of life will be bitter to our flesh until we apply the principles of the crucifixion state that makes the bitter water sweet. We have to crucify the old nature in its lust. Healing of soul and body will be the resultant blessing. Oh Lord! Exodus chapter 15 verse 22 through 26. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. Galatians Chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16 through 26. Next, they come to Elam, the place of deep wells and shady, fruit-bearing palm trees, a time of rest and refreshing in the shade of the righteous pillars of the house of God and his government system. The righteous are said to be like palm trees. In Psalms chapter 92 verse 12. And the 12 wells symbolize race. And the 12 wells symbolize sources of living water in the system of divine government. 12 equals government. Through submission. To his ordained authority, there is a refreshment and nourishment. We need to submit to his authority. Exodus chapter 15 verse 27. First Peter chapter 3 verse 1 through 2. First Peter chapter 5 verse 5. Titus chapter 2 verse 1 through 15. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Number 4. Then after more time in the wilderness, the flesh cries out 
for the old gratification that the pleasures of Egypt gave them. They crying out for Easter because Passover ain't like the celebration of Easter. That old self-gratification is calling them back. They have to learn to collect heavenly manna and enforce a change of diet upon themselves. Also the lesson that the provision of their own desires bring death on them. We have to make Yeshua the source of our life and draw out the substance from him. Exodus chapter 16, verse 1 through 16. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. James chapter 1, verse 12 through 25. John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 17. Number 5. Provision is made for them to keep the Sabbath. Oh my goodness. Ooh, where did I find this at? Oh, this was done by the Holy Ghost. Number five. Provision is made for them to keep the Sabbath. The lesson here, that if they obey, he will provide. What you say? The lesson here, that if they obey, he will provide. We can rest in him and trust him to provide. If we cease from our own works, we must put to death the motivation of our own nature, our own will. Exodus chapter 16, verse 22 through 30. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 through 16. James chapter 4, verse 13 through 17. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Number 6. Oh Lord, a little while after... Bringing into subjection the natural mind, the thirst for the natural sources of life will rise up and cry out for satisfaction. Our natural man doesn't want to die. We have to learn to drink from the rock, from the living water he supplies. Exodus chapter 17, verse 1 through 7. John chapter 4, verse 10 through 15. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. James chapter 3, verse 12. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 17. Number 7, war with Amalek ensues. This time, it is not a natural battle. Come on, most high God. This time, is it is not a natural battle. It comes from without. It is a spiritual one that can only be won through prayer over the forces of the enemy that would come against us to stop us from reaching the goal. We have to stand upon his word, the rock. And win the victory over his assault. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 through 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through 11. The armor count is a physical type or typology of a spiritual reality. The spiritual life process of sanctification or becoming changed into his likeness. It represents the journey of our lives, our time of betrothal to the heavenly bridegroom. We are, as we go through the wilderness, overcome obstacles and root out the negative actions attributes of the flesh and develop and strengthen the positive qualities of God's spirit in our lives in preparation for the consummation of our spiritual union with Mashiach. Every day counts. Each week is significant in the preparation period. 
Each of these weeks in on a Sabbath. Come on, don't say God! Each of these weeks ends on a Sabbath. A day of cessation. From our own works. At the end of each cycle. Of days counted each week. We come into his rest. Elevation. Over the works of our flesh. As we count the armor. Then seven times. We come to a Sabbath. That is. A citation from labor signifying an attainment of spiritual rest after we have fulfilled that week of counting, that week of overcoming. Hallelujah! For he who has entered into his rest has himself also ceased from his work as God did from his. What you say? Wow. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9 through 10. For he who has entered into his rest has himself also ceased from his work as God did from his. Wow. Hebrews Chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. If we would submit to the Most High's timetable and patterns by literally counting the omer, we would be in harmony with the moving of His Spirit in our lives and overcoming the flesh. As we go through the process of marking each day, and go through the ritual celebration, we are inscribing the significance of the armor upon us and ordaining the day for the sanctifying work of the Spirit in our lives. Let's count the armor and press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of the most high God and Yeshua, the Messiah, and be prepared, ready to meet the heavenly bridegroom at his coming and glory upon the mount. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. Amen, 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 and amen. Week one, which we're in right now, the first week or cycle in this period is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's a time to remove all leaven, all the wrong doctrines, and ensure that we truly are unleavened and be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Oh, Lord, go ahead.
I know your love will bring me home someday. If I should, if I should, I want to come home. Woo! This teaching was so good this morning. It was so good. It was so good. It was so, so good this morning. So good. All right. Don't worry about it. So good, so good, so good. Y'all need to go back and listen to this teaching. I'm like the most high. This teaching needs an encore. I am so serious. This teaching needs an encore. I don't know if we're going to do it tomorrow or we're going to do it on Sabbath Saturday. But this teacher needs an encore. Because right now we are counting the Omer with no understanding. With no understanding. I love when the Most High comes with full understanding of why we do what we do. Thank you, Most High. I am past excited. So get to the blog spot. Get to Facebook. Get to YouTube. Oh, it will encourage you. Have a supernatural day five. I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. You know I love you. Bye now. So good. So, so good. All right, Doreen. I see you out there, girl. Bye now.